Welcome to the Pop Filler Podcast. My name is Philip. Before we do anything else, let's take a look in the mailbag. Samuel R. asks, Of all the alien invasions and encounters portrayed in TV and movies, which scenario do you think would be most likely to happen in real life? I don't know what's most likely, Samuel, but I think there are some things we might learn from on-screen portrayals of aliens. For instance, if their ships are on the small side and just buzz around the sky, those aliens are probably more curious and are just part of some research mission. On the other hand, if the ships are large and land themselves in a single location, there's a good chance that they're planning to do some damage. I'm guessing I'll never have any real-life encounters, though I will say that every morning on my commute to work, I look out of my car's window to see if a ship has parked itself over downtown. Nothing so far. I hate to say this, but it's time for Chinch Watch. Our backyard currently has an infestation of chinch bugs. If you didn't know, these are small thatch-dwelling insects that often feed off of grass. They tend to thrive during hot months, and you can often spot evidence of their presence by yellowing areas in the turf. You can even do a test with a coffee can to see if they're there. You cut a hole in the bottom of the can, then drive it into an area of grass that you think might be infested, then fill the can with some water. If there are chinch bugs there, they'll float to the top, mostly attracted by the rich, roasted scent of coffee bean residue. I've actually heard that coffee chinch water is a delicacy in some cultures, but I haven't tried any myself. So the dead area in our backyard snakes through a large portion of the grass, like a desert continent floating in a great green ocean. I started taking a picture every couple of days from the same part of the yard to see if I can track the spread of the damage. I also bought a spray that is supposed to kill a large number of different bugs, including chinch, though I'm worried that it might not be strong enough. When I sprayed the first time, I checked back a couple of days later and still found them there. I recently sprayed for a second time, so I'll check to see if they're still there and maybe upgrade to a different insecticide, maybe pellet-based. We'll see how this turns out. Maybe the lesson I should be learning is that thirsty grass isn't meant to grow everywhere, and nature is telling me I should focus on xeriscaping instead. For now, I'll keep up the chinch watch. Now we're going to play a game called Taciturn Terms. This is a deceptively complex guessing game of words. Here's how it's played. Prior to this recording, I've written down a single word on a piece of paper and sealed it in an envelope. I'm the only one who knows what's written down on this piece of paper. Now here's where it gets tricky. Right now, I have to guess the word in that envelope. And as another layer of complexity, I'll only have 10 seconds to guess. All right, are we ready? All right, 10 seconds to guess the word and begin. Coerced, hounded, pressured, browbeaten, uh, threatened, badgered, uh, intimidated, domineered, hectored. Well, shoot, I didn't guess the word. All right, I'm gonna check the envelope. You know, I think every guess that I made was a synonym for... Yep, dragooned. Well, I was circling the right answer at least. That's it for taciturn terms. Dear Diary, Occasionally, I'll wake up with a crick in my neck that smarts when I turn my head a certain direction too quickly. This happened to me earlier in the week, and it was particularly bad. At first I thought I had just slept on my neck wrong, as is the case with past cricks. But then I remembered I had been to the gym the day before. I had done a series of weak person exercises that included using some of their lightest hand weights. I'm guessing that's what led to my hurt neck. 
I probably hadn't stretched enough either. Over the next couple of days, I tried slowly rotating my neck to work out the tension, but it remained pretty painful. I finally took a warm bath, which I'm not sure did much, because it really takes some effort to get my neck all the way under the water in a regularly sized bathtub. Afterwards, I also spent a few minutes resting my head on an acupressure pillow that belongs to my wife. If you're not familiar, these acupressure pads and pillows jab small plastic spikes into your body as you lie down on them. I decided to just use the pillow. It's painful at first, then after lying on it for a bit, it doesn't hurt quite as much. Then finally you grow accustomed to the pain and even welcome it. I rotated my neck around on the pillow and felt it drive its sharp fingers into my skin. This, or maybe the bath, too, really seemed to do the trick. Now, I can tilt my head back to take a drink of water without wincing. I've also decided to switch pillows to see if that makes a difference, though I won't be sleeping on an acupressure pillow. Hopefully I won't have to worry about any more cricks for a while. Until next time, your friend, Philip. Okay, before we wrap things up, it's time for household tips. Do you ever pour a glass of water and then not finish it? That happens in our home more often than I care to admit. If this happens to you, here's the tip. Take that undrunk water and pour it in a plant. The plant will appreciate the drink more than your drain. Okay, that'll do it for another pop filler. Thanks for listening, and remember, you'll be fine. Bye.